Right. Okay, so we move on from Galatians to Ephesians. And uh, yeah, Ephesians, just like uh, Galatians, uh, has six chapters. Um, um, so let's, uh, let's just start right away. Okay, I've also uploaded the I've also uploaded the notes for Ephesians in our, in our classwork uh, section. So it's under course material, course notes. You can um, check it out. Notes for the Ephesians uh, is there. Um, so let me um, share the notes with you, even as we go through the introduction of, uh, of uh, Ephesians. Right? Sorry, one second. Okay. Okay, so that's coming up on the screen. So, yeah, so as we uh, start with Ephesians, we look at the uh, territory, we look at the area. So we see that it's what today we call as uh, Turkey, and uh, that country and that region was known as Ephesus, um, and it was an ancient Greek city. Um, and uh, and today it is called Selsuk in the Izmir province in Turkey. So the same, uh, it was this town which was called, uh, or city, uh, uh, which was uh, called Ephesus, the ancient, uh, ancient times, right? So, um, so what we see is that this particular, Okay, as you can see in the map, it's a it's a port town or port city, and uh, if you recall, Corinth was also a similar port uh, city, right? It uh, it was uh, it, 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 you know it had access to the sea, and there was a lot of uh, trade that was happening um, because ships would come in and um, it would harbor there, and uh, there's a lot of commerce and commercial um, activity that was happening in Corinth. So same here, we see that uh, it is also a port city and therefore a very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, important city. Right? Uh, with regard to religion, um, it had the temple of Diana, and uh, which was probably, you know, at that time, it was the largest building. And it was uh, beautiful and considered one of the seven wonders of the world. And apparently it was constructed of pure marble, marble paved street leading up to it. And, and its con construction took about 220 years, almost two centuries like to finish the construction. Right? And the statue of the, of the deity Diana, whom they worship, they believe that it actually fell down from the sky you know, as as referenced in Acts chapter 19. So, so this is uh, a background about the city, about the beliefs, uh, about the you know, commerce and everything uh, that was happening there. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to, uh, let's look at uh, you know uh, Paul's ministry in Ephesus. You know, how does Paul? Uh, when what is the first time he goes there, and what is the work that he did? So we look at the Book of Acts then we uh, get some information about uh, when you look at Paul's missionary journeys. So it's it's uh, during his second missionary journey, uh, which means that he was um, going along with um, Barnabas, oh, sorry, going along with Silas. And uh, it is during that time that he goes to Ephesus, right? So we see in Acts chapter 18, and verse uh, 18 onwards. So we see that uh, Ephesus is mentioned there, right? Uh, maybe we can read 18 to 28, and then we, we we get to see what happened there, right? So Paul still remained uh, a good while. Now uh, he is actually in, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he goes to Corinth, he was there, and from there, he's moving now. So Paul remained there. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria. And Priscilla and Aquila were with him. He had his hair cut off at Centuria, for he had taken a vow. And he came to Ephesus. 
and left them there, left Paul and, I'm sorry, Aquila and Priscilla there. And, but he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When he asked them, when they asked him to stay a longer time with him, but did not consent because he was on the way to Jerusalem. He took leave of them saying, I might, I might, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem. I will return to you uh, again uh, to you. I will return again to you, God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. So, so that is when we, you know, read about it. Then after that, uh, we see that Priscilla and Aquila are at Ephesus and they meet Apollos, uh, who's, who comes there and he's ministering there. And uh, when they meet with Apollos, we know about it, right? We, they actually uh, taught him, explained to him um, the ways of the uh, ways of the Lord a little more accurately. And then he moves on. Apollos actually is sent to Corinth. And uh, you see, he has a very powerful ministry, right? It says uh, in verse 28, he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing them from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, so, so that is what happened. Then, uh, so, we, well, so that is what we read uh, on his uh, second missionary journey, Paul going there and spending this time here. Uh, then what we see is on his third missionary journey, right? Paul coming back to Ephesus and spending some time there. That is that is what we read in um, chapter 19 of the book of Acts, right? Chapter 19, we see, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Now, this is the second time he's uh, coming to Ephesus and finding some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there, whether there is a Holy Spirit. So he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, in, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. And he went into the synagogue and he, bo and he spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Okay, so this is, uh, this is again what we read. So on his uh, uh, another trip, he comes there, and this is the second time he's coming to Ephesus. So he meets some disciples who knew only about the baptism of John, uh, water baptism. He taught them. He, he laid hands and prayed, and uh, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in tongues, and they prophesied. So all this happened in Ephesus, right? So there were about 12 of them. 12 of them. So he went into the synagogue and for three months he was boldly preaching the gospel there. Okay, Persuading everyone. Now verse 9. But when some were hardened and did not believe but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years. So all who dwelt in Asia, heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Okay, so, um, so, this is, so after some time of six months of teaching in the synagogue, um, so, I'm oh, sorry, three months of teaching in the synagogue, some of them did not believe and they spoke evil about the way. And so he moved from there. And uh, he met in the school of Tyrannus, daily reasoning in the school of Tyrannus. Now, um, we don't have much information in the book of Acts about the school of Tyrannus. Um, but um, but what, what we do know is that he spent some time there and he continued teaching for two years okay, in that place. And um, so a lot of ministry happened so verse 10 says that um, those who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord. Okay, so obviously 
uh, you know, the surrounding region of uh, from Ephesus, uh, people either came from there to the school of Tyrannus and they heard the gospel, they were trained by Paul, and uh, probably they went out from uh, from uh, from this uh, from Ephesus and they went back to their home, own hometowns or went back to that surrounding region and shared the gospel there. So it says that, uh, and also maybe Paul also traveled, we don't know. So, so all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Right? So the uh, surrounding churches also heard. And in Ephesus, of course, we see the work of the supernatural through the hands of Paul. God worked unusual miracles, verse 11 says that, uh, so this reference about how handkerchiefs and aprons were kept on Paul's body and then, or uh, you know, he, he prayed over it and then they brought it to the bodies of sick people, then the diseases left them, okay, they were healed and even the evil spirits went out. So Paul, you know, God did unusual things, like powerful, unusual things um, happened, uh, you know, around this time during his uh, tenure there in Ephesus. And we also see some some uh, some other thing happening there. You know, we read about the Jewish uh, exorcists, right? The Jewish people who did not believe in Jesus, but they actually said, you know, we in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Right, so they were having this. Um, I mean, this uh, they were they were Jewish exorcists, which means they went about, uh, you know, driving out demons uh, as they knew best. But and they were these sons of Skeva, right? We read about them, sons of Skeva, seven of them, and uh, and this is what they did. They they cast out evil spirits. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, right? So they did not have a personal relationship with the Lord. But we read about that whole incident where um, the seven of them were overpowered by the evil spirit, and they, you know, they ran away, and uh, they were wounded, and they ran away. Their clothes were all torn, and uh, and then we see in verse seventeen, this became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. Right? And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed, I'm reading verse 18, uh, chapter 19 of the book of Acts, and many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also many who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of, them, sight of all, and they counted counted up the value of them and a total 50,000 pieces of silver in all these books and uh, everything that they burned up, it was it was of great uh, you know, value monetarily. And it says, verse 20, so the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. So a lot of things happened. A powerful work happened in uh, Ephesus. Right? So in those two years, uh, Two and a half uh, year uh, or so, um, the word of the God, word of God, grew mightily. Word of the Lord grew mightily, which means that it was all, you know, it was spreading. The gospel was spread. The people were being trained, and and the people were going and and uh, shared right the gospel. So we also read about the seven churches in Revelations two and Revelations three. Right. Ephesus is one of the churches which is mentioned there. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. Now, all these churches were in that region. Right? If you if you look at the map, we see that these are the surrounding churches. Right? So all in Asia, and uh, these are in and around uh, Ephesus. I mean, in and around the same region, right? And the Lord Jesus has a specific me message of uh, for these churches, and we read about that also in uh, Revelation, right? Um, then uh, Acts chapter nineteen, verse twenty-one, also uh, verse twenty-one onwards, then talks about what happened, the riot there, and uh, and how Paul moves out of uh, you know. Uh, 
uh, verse 20 you know from there he moved and went to uh, macedonia right so we uh, read about all that in ephesus there seems to be a great ministry which has happened starting by teaching at the synagogue then in the school of tyrannus or, or even before the synagogue you know the disciples who were uh, uh, filled with the spirit and they prayed in tongues and they encountered the work uh, powerfully the power of the holy spirit they were filled in the spirit they prophesied they prayed in tongues right so we read about uh, that uh, that is how it started and then went on to synagogue where he te taught and then the the school of tyrannus where he again trained people now we read about uh, many of them who were trained um, chapter 20 verse 4 uh, you know all these people who are listed here so peter of beria aristarchus secondus uh, you know all these uh, uh, people uh, apparently you know from the city of Colos colosse which was again in that same region you know, about 100 miles uh, from ephesus so it is possible that they you know, they were trained by paul in ephesus and uh, you know they they moved on right so titus also was part of uh, one who accompanied was part of this team and titus um, uh, was uh, was also uh, ministering along with ephesus right uh, so so we read about that he also raised up many leaders in ephesus and uh, we we read about that and how he met them and for the last time you know we we read that in uh, in the book of acts as well uh when we read uh, acts 20 towards the end of acts 20 uh um this is what we so you know he obviously had a close relationship with them verse 38 talks about you know that the fact that they were sorrowful because they would see him no more you know that was the last time that they would see him and so we we read about that okay so um in ephesus we see that uh, paul wrote the epistle to the galatians right and also first corinthians right and uh, paul comes to miletus which is uh, south of ephesus and and he ministered here and uh, paul also it you know, seems like paul worked and ministered and all this information we get when we read uh, you know the book of acts 18 onwards right? uh, and we see that uh, almost like he it seems to have spent almost three years in ephesus um okay so from ephesus we see that uh, he he was uh, he journeys to rome okay this is um you know acts chapter 27 and 28 he's he's in rome and uh, from rome in he, he was actually a prisoner there in rome and from rome he seems to have written these epistles right colossians philemon ephesians philippians and and like these are called the prison epistles of paul right from prison he writes this so uh, Ephesians was written by Paul when he was in prison, when he was imprisoned in Rome, right? Okay, and then um, uh, Ephesus, uh, much later, we see that uh, Timothy is appointed as a leader there, as a pastor there, and uh, and Paul, when he writes to Timothy, instructions, to encourage him etc so we see that uh, timothy was taking care of the church in ephesus right so he gives a lot of information uh, you know instruction to timothy so all this we see was uh, happening at ephesus and uh, and how paul was associated with the believers at ephesus and how he raised up timothy to uh, and appointed him as a as a leader there in ephesus right Okay, so let's uh, move on to chapter one, and uh, and let's let's go 
chapter by chapter okay we let's read the chapter one and the first few verses okay paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god to the saints who are in ephesus and faithful in christ jesus grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ jesus just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in christ should be to the praise of his glory in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory okay so quite some some heavy stuff there right uh, right there in the first few verses itself um, you know theologically he's just laying down some very very uh, important uh, revelations uh, uh, to the believer what has happened to the believer right in christ uh, the identity of the believer the position of the believer uh, and, and all that he's just laying it down okay so as as usual his um, you know his greetings and uh, you know he's talking about the grace and peace he's is is blessing the believers saying grace and peace uh, from god our father uh, and lord jesus christ um and this is addressed to the uh, uh, you know saints in ephesus and obviously they they would have read this letter in in uh, the surrounding churches as well right so um, they, they would have done that as was the custom so um so he says paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god so again and again he reiterates and i'm called to be an apostle and this call was not something that i took up it was uh, it is something which, uh, which, which is the will of god right it originated from the heart of god this call and it's not something that i took up myself okay so grace and peace and uh, you know to all the saints to whom he's is uh, addressing this episode okay so verse three we see blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ so this here's an important truth that we as believers have been blessed that we as believers have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ jesus right which is quite an eye opener that in christ we have already been blessed and that word bless there means uh, you know it, it's uh, it's a word that you for praise as well right we've been we've been blessed uh, we've been given we have uh, you know with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ okay spiritual meaning something that is uh, of the spirit of god which is not fleshly which is non carnal um 
and uh, it is uh, uh, which is quite opposite of the flesh. You know, like we studied in Galatians, we we see that it has nothing to do with the flesh, but it's of the spirit. Uh, the source is the Holy Spirit. So every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, okay. So every blessing, every blessing that is originating from God, is a spiritual blessing, and and we have been blessed with each and every one of them, which is uh, which is a which is a great truth, which is a great blessing, and uh, you know we have been blessed with this. Um, which is, you know, which is again something that takes us by surprise. You know, this is our inheritance. This is something that we have received simply because of our union with Christ. What happened to us at salvation? We received Christ. We are one spirit with Him, and because we are in Christ, now that also happened uh, because of God's initiative, the Father's initiative. You know, He decided, and He decided that those who put their trust in him, those who receive this by faith, and, and this is also something that is offered by grace. So we come to be in Christ. So in Christ, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us, verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay, so God chose us, and uh, it, it it looks like you know it it dis, it shows something about God. The fact that God is beyond time itself, because it says that uh, you know He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. Like the thing is, foundation of the world in, for us. The foundation of the world, okay, creation and everything, and then here we are somewhere in time where, you know, we are, we have, we are born and we are living, uh, living our lives, and we have spent whatever 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But here, scripture, the truth is that he, even though we were living here in time, we were actually chosen before the foundation of the world. Okay, where foundation of the world and creation, everything happens here. So even before that, we were chosen, which means that God is outside of time. God is outside of, you know, for us, time is linear. It just happens one year after another. But God who is outside of time, you know, he is able to choose. He's a, because of his omniscience, uh, he's able to see into time what will happen in the future. And he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, okay? Um, that, look at the objective of it. The, uh, you know, what is the, the, what is the purpose? That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, okay? That we should be holy and blameless before him in love, okay? So in Christ, he, he accomplished that, you know, he justified us, he sanctified us, but we also know that it is a walk of sanctification and consecration, right? It is a daily walk. So God's will is this, that we should be holy. He has made us holy and righteous. If God's will is this, we continue on, you know, from that place uh, of position of holiness that he's, you know, given us, right? So that we should be holy and blameless uh, before him in love. Look at verse 5. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, now here's another you know, a term that we see here, which is uh, predestined. Okay. Now, this word predestined has thrown off a lot of people who, who, who said that, okay, no, only some are predestined to be saved, and that is by God. God knows he, he, he predestined somebody to be saved. Like the thing is, when we see, look at this verse, what is it that God 
predestines okay like which means that he he foreknew and he also he decided beforehand you know that's what it means predestined right now we need to understand this predestination is not predetermination okay what is it that he predestined he predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself so which means that the, the, the human beings who are free moral agents who've been given free will they can make the choice whether to accept or to reject Christ whether to accept the work of salvation or to reject but if they choose to accept then they will be they you know they will be adopted as sons by Jesus Christ to himself now, that is what has been predestined right because he's not doing away with the choice he's not done away with our choices and he also knows what has happened you know it's like God knows the future okay this person has been given the choice this person has made the choice and this person because of the choice has been adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High God now that he already foreknows right? because that is why he is God right? so he has predestined us to adoption so that's one of the things that we see is according to the good pleasure of his will so it's something that is that is bringing delight to God according to the good pleasure of his will right uh, so that's uh, that's a word that we see there good pleasure something that brings him delight uh, something that is he's satisfied with right uh, that when when people would it takes great pleasure when people come to the saving knowledge of Christ right so yeah yeah let's look at the next verse um, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved okay so he made us accepted in the beloved we are accepted by him and uh, to the praise of the glory of his grace it's, it's a work of grace and the grace of god is also something that expresses or shows the glory of god right the glory of god meaning uh, who God is and what he does, like the nature of God and the works of God, right? So um, this grace of God is something that indicates the glory of God, which expresses the glory of God. And so to the praise of the glory of his grace, right? by which he made us accepted in the beloved. So we've been, we've been accepted by him uh, because we accepted, we received the grace of God because we received what was offered to us because of the grace of God right so we are accepted by him we are received by him we are accepted by him um, so we are in the family of God you know, all these are in Christ truths right which we need to be really strong in so you know we have been blessed uh, already blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ we are accepted in the beloved we are uh, welcomed into the family of god so you know, as a people you know his uh, it, it's his good pleasure uh, according to his good pleasure he has adopted us into the family right and it's something that he did not do it like oh i have to do it and it's not something out of hesitation it's not something that he's uh, you know he did it uh, you know uh, hesitantly no no it's something that brings in great delight for us to be part of his family for us to be adopted for us to be able to call him our father uh, and to you know he's received us accepted us um, and and that's something you know he's pleased it's according to the good pleasure of his will right in christ we are accepted we are blessed we are uh, you know it's according to the pleasure of his will Right. okay verse 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins 
according to the riches of his grace. Okay, so that's verse 7. In Christ, we have redemption. In Jesus Christ, we who are believers, who we have a redemption, right? So what is that word redemption? It means that, um, you know, in Christ, you know, first semester we have studied, we have studied in Christ. And the word that is used there is this, that something that was released by paying a ransom. Okay. A ransom was paid. You know, so let's say somebody is kept captive. Then a ransom was paid, a price was paid, and released that person from captivity. Okay. So that's that word here. You know, different words are used, right? Uh, for redemption, and uh, we see this word used there, which talks about um, ransom being paid so that the person can be released from captivity. So we have been redeemed. It talks about the blood of Jesus, which was the price, you know, the dead sacrifice that was made. So we have been redeemed. We have received redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Okay. According to the riches of his grace, uh, which means that it's, it was an abundance, it's extravagant, and uh, it was the grace of God. So it, the grace of God, meaning uh, the charis, uh, you know, it's something that is a free gift, right? Uh, the word charis is used there, which is a free gift, and it's a gift of grace, right? And uh, we've been redeemed, we received forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace that he poured out upon us. Okay, Ephesians 1 8, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and Prudence. Now, this grace was, uh, you know, it's it was not given in uh, miserly in small amounts, but it was. He poured out this grace upon us. He, he has poured out this grace, something that is uh, unmerited favor, something that is unearned, uh, which can be only received gratefully. Right? It's it's not because of our performance. It's not because of our good deeds, but he has given it to us free. Okay, all that we can do is receive it gratefully. Now, now this grace, according to the riches of his grace, right? Something that is extravagant. He has he has given it to us, and and it's it says that in all wisdom and prudence, that it is the wisdom of God and the prudence of God, which yeah. by which He has made the grace His grace available for us. Okay, verse 9, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. And again, you know, we are all con we are, we are continuing this in Christ, now, in him, the theme which we started in verse 7, right? In him, we have redemption. So here, uh, in Christ, that we, uh, uh, that you know, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he purposed in himself. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Right. Okay, so his will, his glorious plan and purpose that he wants to, or he is already unfolded on the earth. He, this, you know, this was uh, when we say the, uh, when we say mystery, we see that something that was hidden for in the previous dispensation, or something that was, uh, you know, it was it's, it was concealed. Okay, but the thing is that this was concealed for us to discover to the purpose of. Uh, you know, in the fullness of the time that it will be, uh, uh, it will be discovered, right? So it was hidden, it was concealed for a season, for a time, that it might be revealed. Okay, so it talks about uh, and the word mystery. You know, the Greek Greek word mysterion, which means uh, you know something that is secret, something that is uh, hidden, and something that is, uh, and we know in context that is something that's 
hidden or it could be a revelation hidden so that it can be revealed okay so we see that uh, it was hidden in the times in the earlier dispensation but it has been revealed okay uh, for us and uh, in in this dispensation that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times that he might gather together in one all things in Christ which are in heaven and which are on earth in him so so what does that mean that uh, that God wants to redeem the whole earth redeem everything back to himself right again is it an automatic thing no it depends on the choice of of uh, the created beings right he has a choice of man so but his his will his desire is that everything be redeemed okay so that is what we let's look at that verse again that he might redeem he might gather together in one all things in christ so which means that that, that is his, you know that's uh, that's the plan that's a, that's the desire rather that in christ everything might be gathered that who, which means that whoever is in christ will be gathered to him you know which are in heaven and which are on earth might be gathered to him so so that's the that's the desire right so in the fullness of the time you know we we saw that in galatians also uh, the appointed time or the kairos moment uh, you know in the uh, fullness of time uh, opportune time right so god did that so he has a sense of okay he, he has a set time right in the fullness of time this is going to happen right so so that's that's what we see in verse 10 okay in verse 11 okay in him also we have obtained an inheritance right we having sorry being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will okay so verse 11 in him also we have obtained a, an inheritance and you know there's something inheritance is something that is get, kept in family for a family member right uh, and at the right time so it's uh, it's in we have received an inheritance and uh, it is uh, you know he's already spoken about something he's already listed out uh, the forgiveness and uh, forgiveness of sins and the all the spiritual blessings that we received and redemption through his blood and and uh, you know the mystery of his will all that so we have received this inheritance okay in him um, so he's kind of reiterating that we obtained an inheritance and again he uses the word you know the predestined being predestined according to the purpose of him so we obtaining this rest inheritance as believers in christ is also something that is predestined okay so what is the pre thing that is pre no we need to be careful about I mean, or you know very very sure and clear about this whole thing of predestination okay so it's not that he's controlling people's choices then you know then it wouldn't be fair at all right which means that people do not have choice do not have free will and it's like people are forced to do something or uh, they are forced to be in almost like robots uh, without any uh, you know sense of uh, ability to make decisions on their own now that is not the thing right so he's given us free will so what is the predestined uh, predestination here you know we are what are we being predestined for being predestined um, to obtain this inheritance to obtain this inheritance in him to receive this inheritance so he has already predestined that saying okay when so and so becomes a believer when so and so is in christ then he or she will receive this inheritance now that's something that is predestined and is predestined according to his purpose 
who works all things according to his will according to the wisdom or the advice counsel of his will right so he's predestined according to his purpose according to his plan who works all things according to to the counsel the wisdom of his will okay so um just wanted to look at verse 11 and uh, you know look at that word counsel which talks about purpose again which talks about uh, choice and advice and in the english it would be advice so it also has that added uh, meaning of the purpose and choice right volition free will right? according to his choice or the, his purpose and according to his will um okay that um word will uh, which actually means uh, again inclination or a desire okay according to the purpose of his desire or you know something that gives him pleasure something that is uh, gives him that delights him right so according to that he has purposed that we will receive this inheritance obtain this inheritance and he works all things you know something we understand you know, this is a revelation about the way god functions right he has predestined certain things for the believers right? those who are in christ there are some things that are already you know, just by virtue of the fact that we are in christ he has already predestined that this is what you will receive like this is what will be you will be this is what this is what will be your identity this is what will be your blessing this is what you will receive into your life okay he has already decided that okay now the choice is ours to accept him and to receive what he has decided what he wants to you know um, richly uh, make sure that this is coming into your life and my life right and we also see the heart of god he wants to bless right? and his purpose and his plan is to bless and he works all things according to his the uh, the wisdom and the purpose of his will or desire which is good okay so we understand something about the heart of god that it doesn't in christ it's it's not for us to our life should be destroyed it's not like like our life should be corrupted and no that is not his intention at all right so every time we have a doubt we go back and say okay god this is what it is this is what you intend for us and this is what your your plan is your purpose is for me as a believer and so you know i choose to receive this right? what you choose to pour out richly i choose to receive wholeheartedly right okay so verse 12 uh, and we'll finish with this uh, verse 12 that we who first trusted in christ should be uh, to the praise of his glory in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation whom also having believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory okay. so verse 12 talks about that we who first trusted in christ should be to the praise of his glory right that uh, we have uh, got this inheritance and uh, we have trusted in him and it should be to the praise of his glory praise of who god is and and what he does uh, we our lives and everything you know uh, it just just overflows with that it just points to that and we see a similar thing in first peter 2 right verse 9 uh, that we are here to declare the virtues of god through our words and through our lives and so on so we should be to the praise of his glory in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth so he's talking to the believers and he's saying you know you trusted after you heard the word of truth okay so it's not something that's deception it's not something that's uh, you know that's a lie mixed with truth but it's the word of truth so in him 
you trusted, you heard the word of truth, the gospel, the good news of your salvation. So this is it. You trusted, you made a choice, and uh, you, uh, you know, you, the, this is the good news of the, the salvation, the gospel of your salvation. And the word used there, salvation, is soteria, okay, which again, uh, we, you know, we, that, that's a word which is derived from sozo, which means that uh, everything, forgiveness, healing, deliverance, prosperity, peace, right, everything is packed in that verse, that word. Okay, so we'll stop here, uh, verse 13, and um, we'll continue in our next class, right? Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just stop the recording. So, um, yeah, Kiran, you want?